Hey SP fam, carnivores, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you all are having an amazing day. As usual, drop a comment down below. Let me know any updates you'd like to share with me regarding your carnivore journey. So after I posted my last video, and by the way, thank you all so much for the kind comments. Also saw a lot of comments asking how did it go in China regarding staying carnivore this is what I want to talk about in this video but I first have to let you guys know that I am not feeling my best because the whole entire time I was in China I totally changed up my eating routine like everything was just flipped upside down and I definitely gained weight I didn't weigh myself just because I don't really need a number to know if I gain weight or not, I go by how I feel and I go by how my clothes fit, especially the clothes that fit well before I left to China now fit tight. I just feel heavy, heavier. I know my face, I know my body, I wake up to it every single day. And for me, when I gain weight, the first place that it is visible is my cheeks, my tummy area, as well as my inner thighs. I think the typical places for women and even just talking about weight gain in this video openly with you guys, I have to say I've come a long way when it comes to body image and weight because before going carnivore, I was so obsessed with being skinny and not passing a certain number on the scale. And I just was so, so self-conscious of my chubby cheeks. And, you know, I did all of the things, all of the mistakes, counting calories, restricting, punishing myself um, to not eat for a whole day because I ate too many sweets the day before. I was also vegan before going carnivore. And it also did a lot of damage to my body, my health, my skin, and my metabolism. Four years on carnivore now, I see so, so many improvements in so many areas of my body, skin being the most obvious one. And I still have really good skin, even after what happened in China, but I can tell basically that I gained weight, uh, my clothes are tighter, my cheeks are puffier, and I'm trying to embrace this weight gain, knowing that now that I'm back in the States, now that I can go back to a regular routine, gives me a lot of peace and excitement. Hopefully me sharing this video will let you guys know that Hey, it's okay if you fall off track a little bit. It is okay if you gain weight, especially if you are dealing with things that give you a lot of stress. With that being said, let me just show you guys the situation in my belly area because for me, that is the biggest change that I've noticed. So this is a crop top and I wore this on purpose. I'm gonna try to just show you what I'm dealing with here, okay? So this is what I'm dealing with. And I know my body when I am eating clean. And this compared to before I left China is visibly puffier, a little bit rounder. And again, I am not complaining in any way. And look, I feel zero embarrassment because I know it will keep me accountable. If I were to guess, I think I gained about up to 10 pounds when I was in China across the time span of four months. Was I able to stay carnivore in China? The answer to that is yes, I was absolutely able to stay carnivore in China. I was a little bit nervous before flying to China because even though meat is a big part of Chinese cuisine, rice is involved always. The oils that they cook with is just the worst oils. They put soy sauce and sugar in 
everything. I would basically just every single day order groceries online and have it delivered. But what contributed to the weight gain and me now feeling sluggish and not optimal was because I was taking care of my dad and a big part of the care for my father uh, was cooking multiple meals throughout the day for him. Because as you can imagine, straight out of surgery, he really doesn't have a healthy appetite. He had to eat multiple meals, snacks throughout the day. Did I try to help my dad go carnivore? Since I was in control of cooking, of course I made him the absolute best, healthiest, most nutrient dense and nourishing carnivore side dishes, meals, for him to aid in his recovery. Egg pudding, I made him so many egg puddings because that was probably the most perfect food for him. It's perfect for babies and toddlers. If you wanna try my egg pudding, I will link the recipe down below. Because I was cooking all throughout the day every day for him, I was also eating all throughout the day with him. So I pretty much ended up eating also three to four times throughout the day every day. I didn't really have the luxury to eat my favorite beef cuts every single day. I did have to lean on cheaper foods, things that were easier to just take out and eat because I didn't wanna spend all of my time cooking for myself. I ate a lot of cheese and yogurt. There were meals, to be honest, that was just cheese, yogurt, and maybe some cured meats like prosciutto or salami. He also really loves yogurt. He also loves cheese, especially brie and gorgonzola cheese. That's his two favorite cheeses. So of course, when he's eating cheese and yogurt, I'm obviously sitting next to him also eating it with him. The whole four months was basically 50% cheese and yogurt and so much cured meats. The rest was fresh cooked meals that I could cook the way that I wanted to. You know, I'm not surprised that I feel heavier. I look heavier. I'm five foot 10, which is I think 178 centimeters. So maybe to you, I don't look like I gained that much weight, but I know how I looked and felt and how my clothes fit before China. And things are fitting pretty tight, <laughs> especially around the stomach area and just like the cheeks really just pop now. Um, but again, I'm embracing this weight gain. I'm excited because I could show you guys and stay accountable through more videos on how I'm going to whip myself back into a good routine that I'm comfortable with. Let me know if you want me to document my journey going back to where I was before the China trip. So if you would like me to document my progress to getting fit and feeling great again, I would be more than happy to film and share with you guys every step of the way. So overall, how was it like staying carnivore in China? Grocery shopping and the whole grocery delivery delivery system in China is incredible. You can make the order in the morning and it will be delivered to you within three to four hours. By the way, I am from Shenzhen. It's right next to Hong Kong. The grocery markets, they're all extremely versatile. They have international foods. They have honestly everything that I needed. What I did notice though, which is interesting, their butter was weird. Like all of their butter had strange ingredients. Butter was difficult, really difficult to find a suitable one. The cuts that I always ordered were short ribs and the short ribs that they have in China are really cut in a different way. They're like the thick cut short ribs, but smaller. The bone is so much smaller. When I was able to have steak, I savored every single bite of the steak. So I had a lot of seafood, so many eggs. I honestly didn't get sick of it because I cooked it all different ways. Soft boiled, fried scrambled eggs, so many egg puddings. But I think what I ate the most of was yogurt, cheese, so much brie, so much brie and a lot of cured meats. When I eat cheese, it really opens up my appetite. I take a couple bites of cheese and I'm like, hmm, now I kind of want some yogurt to add some variety to my palate. And I eat some yogurt and then I'm like, well, now I want some cured meats to complete this little snack. And then it just basically became a whole meal. And if you know me and you've been following this channel and my progress, you know that I don't eat salt. So the whole four months in China, 
Every single day I was eating so much salt. Going from zero salt and just eating all the meats in the carnivore meals, plain, unseasoned and unsalted to now eating so much salt and eating seasoned cured meats. No wonder I was starting to feel drowsy and not as, you know, pep in my step energetic, but I was okay with it. That was not my priority. I put that to the back burner. If I had to eat yogurt and cheese every single day, every single meal, so I can spend all of my time caring for my dad, I didn't have to think twice. And that's what I did. Every single time I bring in the salt and the spices and the pepper, I start feeling sleepier, drowsier, lower energy. I start having lower back pain. And can we talk about the lower back pain? During my period, okay, that week of having my period and the few days leading up to it, I noticed a profound difference in how I felt overall. I had lower back pain every single month, every single time I had my period. And I felt extremely bloated and puffy. The biggest issue at hand that I really want to resolve is my lower back pain. The flight back to the States from China, um, I had to take a connecting flight. So the trip time was 18 hours, sitting upright for two hours, then a three hour layover, and then like a 12 hour flight straight of just sitting up. And that did my lower back zero favors at all. It's just very sore and just tight feeling, especially when I sit too much. And this is just something that I notice anytime I add too much salt, way too many seasonings, eating way too much cheese and processed carnivore foods, I start getting lower back pain. It's just a common symptom that I keep getting. So I know myself. So what have I been doing to heal this lower back situation? I got myself a little body massager because it gives me instant relief. This is what it looks like. Bond Charge is like a super popular uh, brand in the carnivore community because they offer a lot of great biohacking tools. So you can just pull this one out. This is a flat head. So it's great for massaging the lower back. They have this one, which is like a U shape. This one is a round spherical shape, a metal head that turns hot and cold. You can toggle from cold too hot. And finally, they have a head like this one. So my favorite attachment is this flat one because it just fits and feels the best on my lower back. You turn it on right here, you hold it. It basically vibrates really, really fast. You can crank it up, second, third, fourth, fifth. This is intense. <laughs> and within just like two, three minutes, it already feels so much more relieved. I will also link the specific massage gun down below in the description box. I also love their blue blockers, any light from devices like computer, desktop, laptop, and it just helps protect my eyes. Looks very good on my face. It sits well. I can adjust the nose rest. I will also link these down below in the description box if you want to check it out. So I'm going to share some footage of typical meals that I would eat day to day. So like I mentioned, I made a lot of short ribs. They were very cheap in China and a lot of egg puddings. So this meal was kind of our go-to for both myself and my dad. Um, you can tell that the short ribs are cut different. It's shorter, smaller, definitely not flink in style, but not as chunky and big as the American standard cuts. We also loved our soft boiled eggs. I would cook about 20 to 30 at a time and just save it in some Tupperware. Had a lot of fish and seafood, cod. As you can see, the one that's unseasoned is mine. And the one that is seasoned with some spices and sauces is for my dad. Bake it at 350 for about 40 minutes. I also often made in bulk chicken soup. I would purchase whole entire chickens and just put it in a gigantic pot, water, and just slow boil for 12 to 13 hours. It is so delicious. The flavor you get out of it is unreal. I also really enjoyed steaming fish because it's so easy to cook. And this is called kui yu. 
So this was the cheese that I indulged in while in China. It is brie cheese. My dad loves brie and gorgonzola, but I tried the gorgonzola that he likes and it's a little bit too pungent for me. So I just ate a bunch of brie. And I do have to share that seeing my dad kind of be sick and not be in his best condition, it made me feel sad. And so I definitely fell into emotional eating and stress eating because I was worried, I was sad, just seeing my dad in the condition that he was in. So the emotional and the stress eating is definitely getting better, but cheese is addicting and I'm gonna work on that now that I'm back at home. And finally, I just wanted to share the yogurt that I liked. This brand called Classy Kiss, which is only found in China, is really, really good. They have a really nice flavor profile of tangy and creamy. Of course, it's pasteurized, which adds another layer of inflammation, but I liked it. Zero sugar pasteurized yogurt. There were a couple times where I did eat out in restaurants with my mom. We would always go to, and every single time, we would go to a hot pot restaurant. You guys already know, when I'm in the States, if I could choose where to eat outside, it would be hot pot restaurants. Even better, an all you can eat hot pot restaurant. Hot pot is a traditional Chinese way of eating. So eating out in China was actually so much fun and so easy because there are hot pot restaurants on every street, every corner you turn, at least in Shenzhen, my hometown. I would always request for Bai Kai Sui, which is plain boiled water, just plain water. And I would stress to them as best as I can, plain water, that means no herbs, no spices. Please do not throw in random jujubes and dates in there and just give me plain water. I would just order pretty much whatever beef that they offer, beef tripe, beef tongue, any beef cuts they offer. I just told my mom, if you wanna eat out with me, I would love to just go to a hot pot restaurant. Let's just do hot pot hopping anytime we go out together. And that's what we did. If you have any specific questions about my experience in China and you know how it was like staying carnivore in China, you can feel free to just comment it down below. I'll probably just compile all of your questions and answer them all in one video. Another question that I did get asked on Instagram, because I do share a lot of my updates and my day-to-day -day meals on Instagram. When I was in China, what did I miss the most that I couldn't get? All of the carnivore snacks. For example, carnivore crisps. There's nothing like that in China, obviously. You know, the carnivore community in China, I think is non-existent still. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I didn't investigate because I was basically offline when I was there. I missed a crunchy, delicious, clean meat snack. My favorite cuts that I always eat is their brisket, ribeye, and chicken breast. If you're new to carnivore and looking for snacks anyways, Carnivore Chris is just so convenient and so clean. And I'll also make sure to link them down below in the description box so you can kind of browse the variety that they offer. And also something that I missed greatly when I was in China that I couldn't access is carnivore community support. I always knew how important and helpful community is, but boy, did I realize the importance sorely when I was in China. I'm telling you, doing carnivore without that camaraderie and you know the constant connection and the support and the communicating on Zoom with fellow carnivores, like doing carnivore is just different. I definitely felt so alone and like such an alien. Being the only carnivore I knew in China, just left and right, wherever I go, people are eating noodles, eating bowls and bowls of rice, just so much carbs. And even eating with my mom, she still had a lot of judgmental comments that she <laughs> threw my way. She had plenty of questions that showed clear concern about my health. And she really just constantly asked me, are you sure this is healthy? Are you sure it's not gonna affect your long-term health? Are you sure it's not gonna affect your ability to get pregnant? And you know, I tried my best to calm her down and give her proof and evidence but it was hard, okay? So having to deal with my concerned mom every day and not have a community to kind of feel 
normal with was a big change. And now that I'm back in the States, my plan is to lean on my community, the Steak and Butter Gang. I am so excited to be able to hop on Zoom calls again and host my 30 day carnivore challenges and seeing my members post their progress, post their meals and updates, even seeing them struggle on carnivore. It gives me so much inspiration and encouragement to really invest my time and energy into eating carnivore meals that make me feel amazing. And now that I have some weight that I would like to lose, I'll definitely be very, very involved being in those Zoom calls, listening to everyone, listening to my coaches and all the guest speakers that I'm going to invite on. So if you're kind of in an iffy situation like me and you have clear weight that you want to shed, I would love to see you in the steak and butter gang you can actually join any of the monthly challenges anytime throughout the month this month we actually have guests dr elizabeth bright and dr tony hampton visiting us to kind of give their expertise and their expert advice on common carnivore issues concerns and questions if you love dr bright or you're a huge fan of dr hampton this month would be a great opportunity to submit your questions for them and learn from them directly i'm just so happy that i'm back in the states because not only do i have you all um, to keep me accountable and to keep me on track again this is all i'm going to share for today's video i am pretty hungry now i'm going to go eat with steak and butter guy and I just wanna wish you guys an amazing rest of your day. I hope this video kind of gave you guys some inspiration to at least know that slip ups are part of life. Overindulging in cheese and dairy and like spiced processed carnivore foods is totally fine. There is always a way to get back on track. Watch videos, watch carnivores here on YouTube and on Instagram that inspire you. Keep yourself accountable by posting your own progress. Join a community. Mine is always open 24 seven for you to join. I have 30 day challenges to really keep you on track and accountable. Follow me on Instagram because I post a lot of stories sharing more updates, more of my you know experience and tips and tricks. So there's plenty of things that you guys can do to stay on track. But I get it, sometimes life gets in the way. Sometimes big events happen in life where you cannot maintain tip top shape when it comes to how clean you're eating. So I get it. I am trying to embrace everything that I have to deal with right now. And I'm just excited to share with you guys how I'm gonna go about resolving the things that I wanna resolve with future videos. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love you and I appreciate you so much. I'm gonna go eat dinner now. I will see you all in my next video. SPG out.